When you go out at night and look at the sky, there are actually billions of stars that uh, are available out there to look at. But on any given night, especially when you get outside the lights of the city, you can only see about uh, 3,000 of them. Of course, around here, if you go out at night, you can only see two. And if it's cloudy, you don't see any of them, which has been a uh, recent problem for us uh, astronomers. Stars are uh, actually uh, large balls of gas. They uh, condensed out of uh, dust and gas uh, during the formation of the galaxies. And gravity drove them together, which heated them up to incredible temperatures. And uh, at those temperatures, hydrogen started fusing together to form helium. And that's the burning mechanism that actually produces the heat. We in uh, the Western uh, scientific cultures understand that, but uh, the ancients, they had very different ideas as to what the stars were. They turned to uh, mythology to describe the stars, and they used the uh, patterns in the sky, known as uh, constellations, to form figures and to form uh, stories about those figures. As you can see on the screen here, we have one of the constellations up. The ancient Greeks, uh, in terms of the constellations that we know, most of them came from uh, Greek mythology. And uh, the Greeks uh, named uh, 48 uh, constellations. You see one of them on the board or the screen here. This is Orion the Hunter. And unlike a lot of constellations, you can actually um, imagine that uh, this is indeed a person. And he's got a, a bow and uh, has a, a quiver of uh, arrows in his arm. One of the most uh, interesting things about the Orion Nebula, if you look at the belt, there are actually three stars that form the belt, and then hanging from the uh, middle star is a uh, figure that actually looks like a sword. The uh, middle star in that uh, sword is actually not a star. It is a uh, region of uh, dust and gas, which is currently uh, forming stars today. That object, by the way, is very visible to even very modest-sized uh, telescopes that you might buy at a department store. And you can actually see the fuzziness. As a matter of fact, um, one, uh, one culture uh, believed, I think it was the, uh, the Egyptians believed that that, was, uh, that little fuzzy patch was uh, heaven. Next chart, please. Probably the, the most familiar constellation is the, uh, the Big Dipper. Uh, as you can see here, it, you can see the actual Dipper formation, the, uh, the uh, uh, spoon and then the uh, the arm, but the constellation actually includes a lot of other stars. In American Indian mythology, the uh, the Big Dipper was a, a bear, and um, unlike most constellations which come from the Greek, this one is called uh, Ursa Major, the uh, the Big Bear. Other cultures have um, have explained it in other ways. For example, the uh, the African Americans uh, called it the uh, Dipping Gourd, uh, very close to what we uh, call it, the Big Dipper. And uh, since the uh, Dipping Gourd, the uh, what they call the two pointer stars, uh, Dube and uh, Merak, actually uh, point to uh, Polaris, the North Star, and that's the defined Polaris is to use those two stars as a pointer. Uh, that was the way that was pointing north for the uh, uh, Underground Railroad. Deviating from the script a little bit, Nick. Now, the actual story, the uh, Indians, the uh, Cora de Alin, uh, Indians who lived in northern Idaho, thought the uh, constellation was a grizzly bear, and they constructed a uh, myth. There were three brothers who had a grizzly bear for a brother-in-law. The youngest brother liked him, but the two older brothers didn't like him at all. They were on a hunting trip, and the two older brothers told the youngest that they were planning to kill the brother-in-law. The younger brother couldn't let his brothers kill the brother-in-law, so he crept to warn him. The brothers followed uh, closely, and they were ready to shoot the arrows when the youngest looked back and shouted that the brother-in-law was about to be shot. And just as he said it, all four were taken up into heaven and transformed into the stars of the, uh, of the bear. Okay, another constellation which is fairly easily recognized is uh, Perseus. Perseus was the son of Zeus, the uh, king of the Greek gods, and a mortal woman. The woman's uh, husband, uh, the king of uh, Serpicos, was naturally very angry that his wife had an affair with a god, but what can you do, you know, with gods and everything? So instead, when Perseus grew up, uh, Polysolides sent him out on what he believed to be an impossible quest. The king uh, sent out his stepson out to kill Medusa, one of the three sisters called the Gorgons, who were so ugly that anyone who looked at them would immediately turn to stone. He appealed to the gods for help and was given a mirrored shield by Athena, the goddess of wisdom, 
and a pair of winged sandals by Hermes, who is also known as Mercury, the messenger of the gods. Perseus uh, flew up using the sandals to find Medusa. When he found her, he did not look at her, but instead used the uh, shield as a mirror and uh, was able to uh, guide his sword using the mirror, killing, uh, killing Medusa. On his way back from the victory against the Gorgons, Perseus came across a woman chained to a rock, waiting to be sacrificed to a sea monster, Draco. This woman was Andromeda, the princess. Her mother, Cassiopeia, boasted that she and her daughter would be, were more beautiful than the Nereids or the sea nymphs, who were the daughters of Poseidon, and Poseidon sent floods to the land ruled by Cassiopeia as punishment. Cephas consulted an oracle and was told that he had to uh, sacrifice uh, his daughter Andromeda in order to uh, satisfy the gods. Luckily, Perseus came along in the nick of time and uh, saved her. By the way, all those constellations are grouped uh, roughly in the same part of the sky. Uh, Perseus, Andromeda, as well as uh, Cephas and, uh, and Cassiopeia. As a matter of fact, the next slide should be Cassiopeia, which it is. Uh, Cassiopeia, the, as was mentioned in the previous myth, was a uh, queen of ancient Ethiopia. She was a very beautiful woman, but unfortunately she was also very vain and bragged about her beauty. She even boasted that she was far more beautiful than the maidens, the Nereids from the previous myth, who attended Poseidon, the god of the sea, in his underwater kingdom. When Poseidon's maidens learned of this, they were very angry, and the maidens uh, demanded that Cassiopeia or uh, Poseidon punished Cassiopeia for her uh, daring to compare herself to the uh, Nereids. He placed her in the heavens to be scorned, not honored. Cassiopeia swings every half night around the North Star. She is seated in a chair, but the chair is placed upside down. Cassiopeia must hang on with both hands in order to keep from uh, falling out. Okay, next chart, please. This myth comes from uh, East India, and this is talking about uh, Canis Major, the, uh, the great dog, which contains the brightest star that we can see in the sky, which is known as uh, Sirius. Long ago in India, there were five princes who left their kingdom in search of the kingdom of heaven. They took food and drink for their journey. Prince Yasidra brought his dog, uh, Savana. Yasidra kept the eldest, well, excuse me, Yasidra was the eldest. His brothers were all wise and, and learned beyond all men. Uh, Nakula, all handsome, famed for his grace and beauty. Arjuna, the powerful, who had never been defeated in any contest of arms. And uh, Bhima, who was uh, all joyful, known for his good humor and love of pleasure. After many days journeys, the brothers came to a fair where music was playing and people were feasting and dancing. Burma, the all joyful, said to his brothers, I will rest here today and be happy to seek the kingdom of heaven tomorrow. Isidra, his brothers, and the dog Savannah went on without him. Several days later, the travelers arrived at a large plain where a great army was drawn up in ranks facing an enemy. When Arjuna saw this, he said to his brothers, I will fight for my country today and seek the kingdom of heaven tomorrow. Isidra, his brothers, and the dog continued. Many days and nights passed. The travelers came to a magnificent palace surrounded by a garden full of flowers and fountains. In this garden, a beautiful princess was walking with her attendants. When she saw Nakula, the all-handsome, she was seized by love and longing, and Nakula was struck with love. He said to his brothers, I will stay with the princess today and seek the garden, the kingdom of heaven tomorrow. Nakula went into the garden with Yasidra and his brothers, and the dog Savannah continued without him. Many weary days and nights later, the travelers came to a great temple where the holy men lived. Savannah, the all-wise, desired to join them in prayer and told his brother Yasidra, I will stay here today and seek the kingdom of heaven tomorrow. Savada went into the temple, and Yasidra and Savana continued without him. At last, uh, Yasidra traveled to Mount Miro, the doorway of heaven. Indra, the lord of the past and present, appeared before him and invited him to ascend. Yasidra bowed low and replied, Very willingly, I will do so if I may bring my dog Savana. That may not be, said Indra. There is no place in heaven for dogs. Leave him and enter eternal happiness. I cannot do that, said Yasidra. I do not wish for happiness for which I must leave so dear a companion. You traveled on without your four brothers. Why do you not descend to heaven without your dog? My lord, replied Yusidra, my brothers left me to follow the desires of their hearts. Savannah has given his heart to me. Rather than renounce him, I must renounce heaven. You have spoken well, said Indira. Come in and bring your dog with you. So Yusidra and Savannah ascended into paradise in recognition of their devotion uh, to one another and Indra 
excuse me, Indra set in the sky the constellation of the great dog whose uh, star Sirius, as I mentioned before, is the brightest of all the stars in the sky. Sirius is the most striking feature of this constellation. Sirius is 20,000 times brighter than the sun. This star is often called the dog star, and that's where the term the dog days of uh, August come, because that's when uh, Sirius starts rising in the, uh, the morning sky. Okay, um, there are a couple of activities that uh, would be appropriate for uh, this lesson. Uh, the one that uh, I have here today is uh, building what is known as a uh, planisphere. The planisphere consists of two pieces. There is a uh, map of the stars, and then around the outside edge is uh, the, uh, the months of the year and the, and the dates. The other part of the planisphere is a, another disk with a uh, cutout that you have to uh, cut out of the, the center of the disk, and that cutout uh, portion uh, represents the horizon at your location. You uh, cut these uh, items out, as I mentioned, uh, cutting out the center of the, uh, the planisphere, and then the uh, uh, disk is mounted behind this portion here, and uh, you line up the, uh, the date against uh, the hour, which is uh, located along the top here, and that gives you a view of what uh, constellations you would see in the sky looking from uh, horizon to horizon. This is a very simple exercise to do and is very uh, beneficial to the students because they can then play with the, uh, the planisphere and see how the stars move against the sky as a function of the date and time. It shows how the stars move uh, in a 24-hour cycle, but also shows how different constellations appear and disappear as a uh, function of the, uh, the time of the year. With that, thank you very much.